All right, we are live, Lady Ada. What is this? Okay, welcome to our weekly show and tell. This is the Ada for Show and Tell. People are going to show up to some projects. We have special guest eyes hanging out, and yeah. we'll. I don't know if you got a little bit's project. Now's a very good time to show up with it and show yeah. it off. We've been very lucky. There's been a show and tell of little bits demos yeah. right here the yes. entire time, and including some um, little bits that. Uh, no one before seen. No one before Ooh. seen. So for the folks that are watching now, don't forget at eight o'clock, watch Ask an Engineer, and you'll see uh, secret little bits stuff. This is this is a big deal in the world of open source hardware. It's a big deal. <laughs> and, and I know we're here. We're not we're not over in in Rome. So yeah. we're having our own party. <laughs> Maker Fair Rome uh, is coming up this weekend. So anyways, it is a big week for showing and telling all things okay. hardware. Tony, let's start this off from Adafruit, Washington State. Hey, yeah, yeah. So I've been uh, finishing up the Freak Show, the software-defined radio scanner project, and I'll show you real quickly what it looks like. Um, it's basically a Raspberry Pi and the Pi TFT connected to the uh, RTL SDR software-defined radio uh, USB dongle, and it just shows you the frequency or the spectrogram of radio waves around you. So this is tuned to an FM radio station right now, 90.3 megahertz, and you can kind of see that there's the center frequency and nice big spike in intensity, and then it goes out uh, to the left and right. It kind of shows you uh, some of the frequencies around there. And I've built a little UI around this. It's all kind of touch uh, touchscreen based, so you can go in and you can switch to a different mode. Like this is a waterfall uh, graph, and this is showing over time the newest measurements at the bottom, and they scroll up to show kind of the later measurements at the top. And the color of each pixel depends on the intensity of the radio frequency. So it shows you the same information as the instantaneous view, but you see kind of the history of it. And you can see also on the left, it shows um, the intensity levels in decibels. And you can go in then and change things in the configuration here. Oops. So we can go in and say, OK, here's the center frequency. Here's uh, the sample rate, the gain, that type of stuff. So we can change it to, uh, let's do 315 megahertz. And we'll go back to the graph. And it starts over with the waterfall, but let's go to the instantaneous one. Uh, oops. Oh, and this is actually a full screen view of it. So uh, it's it'll, it takes a while for it to fill up. Uh, but let's go back to this. And so this is showing, OK, there's 315 megahertz. And it's pretty much noise. There's not much going on there. Uh, and I, oh, I forgot my little uh, key fob. But I have a little, uh, like if you take a car key remote, you can press buttons on it and see little spikes in intensity. So it's a pretty neat little project. It just uses the, the Pi TFT and its touch screen display. This is the three and a half inch version of it. Uh, so you get a little bit more real estate that you can show more buttons and things on it. Uh, and this is, uh, it'll be written up as a little guide probably, uh, uh, probably today or tomorrow. We'll see it up there. And the other real quick thing that I'll show off is uh, there's a birthday we need to celebrate. So it's the 20th uh, birthday of Doom 2 when it was released <laughs> 20 years ago. So I, I spent a little bit of time yesterday and got Doom 2 running on a Pi TFT so, and, and a Raspberry Pi. And this is uh, the 2.8 inch capacitive touch Pi TFT. And it runs really well. Uh, you have to overclock it. You have to run it at 62 megahertz. Uh, but it's pretty impressive that you know, pretty much you know, 60 frames per second or so animation through the spy bus to the display. And it works uh, pretty well. I have a little USB controller that uh, the Pi picks up and works with really well, uh, just out of the box with it. So pretty kind of cool little thing. Uh, this is using Chocolate Doom, which is one of the source ports of Doom. Uh, and I'll probably do maybe in a, a week or so some instructions that people can follow to uh, get it compiled and start running it. So yeah. Does it run Doom? Is the does it run Linux? It's the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, one in the Good same. Demo. demo. All right. Thank and the you. nice nice thing is with the Raspberry Pi because it's such a small little display and it's kind of a slower processor. It gives you the authentic experience of you know what it was like to play on a 486 or so. Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> no, you can overclock the Pi a little bit. That might help. I, for for the uh, game girl, um, I overclocked it to 900 yeah. megahertz. That that actually does help quite a bit. It's like a, oh nice. 10%, 20% increase. There's a button on the back of the pie that says turbo. If you turbo. press that, it goes faster. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tony. And on to Noam Pedro. Noam Pedro, what do you got cooking this week? Hey, guys. This week, we have more retro goodness. Yay. Flying toasters. Yeah, so we're uh, finishing up an enclosure from our very famous Phil B, who put together an awesome little jewelry pendant here that has little... Cool um, old school toasters flying in there, and we got it oh, set up in a little Mac, or Mac classic looking little enclosure. Got room there for the LiPo backpack, the Pro Trinket slide switch, and for a little LiPo battery. 
Yeah. yeah. And it's activated with the vibration uh, little sensor that we got. Very cool. But for next, or we're launching this week. Yeah, tomorrow is 3D Thursday. We have a very special Halloween-inspired project. Whoa, what is it? Crazy <laughs> cat. It's 3D printed. It's got EL wire, lasers, and EL wire. Or no, NeoPixel rings. It's got a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> it's just and everything. Yeah, so definitely check it out tomorrow. Uh, at 3 p.m. And oh, yeah. uh, it is here. We also have a cool yeah, little project we did with yeah, a little a bit. Yeah, couple, a couple weeks there, months ago, I, I put together uh, a little sort of mount. Oh, this Look at this a little robot. It's so, a walker that uses the little bits. Yeah. Oh my god, it's the Jensen thing. Yeah. Yay! That's very cool. <laughs> very fun. Oh god, it's more fun this way. Awesome. Yeah, it's like a five minute little print. Little Jensen bits. Yeah. <laughs> So again, tomorrow, all that and more, three Thursday, join me, Pedro, and Matt Griffin. Learn about we'll... CAD, learn about design, all that, all the news in 3D printing world. Sure. <laughs> all right. Thank all right. you. Thank you so much, guys. Epic. Thank you. All right. Next up, uh, let's see, Guido. Yeah. Show us your project. Hi guys. Um, yeah. So this is uh, Dr. Nino. It's a board that I made. Um, while I was working on, I don't know if you can see this thing behind me here, this is something I call Orbis. It's an Arduino-based uh, piece of kinetic artwork. Uh, and when I was building it, I realized that um, trying to debug Arduino hardware is difficult. You can't really get in between uh, your, your shield layers. So I made this board that is essentially a breakout. But the cool part here, you can see this light here that's blinking. Um, oops, sorry. So what I can easily do is just with a jumper move the LED such that it's coming out the, the Dr. Duino board. Uh, so it really allows you to kind of get in between your shields pretty nicely. Um, you've got an external reset switch here which doesn't get covered by the shield above it. Um, built in RS-232 for things that still speak RS-232. Um, and it's also kind of nice as just a general uh, learning board. You've got um, probe set it that way you can actually attach uh, you know like your ground your ground probes of your oscilloscope or of your DMM uh, and you know a buzzer in case you wanted to do something like oh, that's cool Oops. like that so it's uh, really meant as a, as a debugging platform or learning tool so uh, if you just yank that off you still have access to the board underneath it pretty neat very cool. All right. Nice. What is, what is the doctor? What is it? What is Doctor Duino a doctor of? <laughs> well, it was, it's just something I yeah, I don't know. It's the doctor of Arduino, I guess. Um, doctor Arduino. That's cool. All right. Sounds handy. Thank you so much for showing off. This is cool. Um, don't forget, send an email to sportedatafruit.com, and your Doctor Duino gets and has seen on the show and tell sticker. Yay! Sweet. That's great. It's kind of like a diploma. But <laughs> yeah. it's a sticker. All right. Thank you. Um, great, accepted at most. Arduino Hospitals. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Duido. Okay. We can go to Joe Gutting next. Yeah. Hey, Joe. How's it going? Joe. Hey, how's it going? Joe. Good. You're on hey. the run. Show us your project. Right. So um, let me switch the cameras real quick. This is my um, my automated greenhouse. So um, where I live in Texas, it gets a little too cold to grow citrus trees in the ground, so uh, I have to keep them inside. And um, so I use a Raspberry Pi and some... Um, you know, little easy uh, moisture sensors that I made to um, keep track of um, how much when the plants need to be watered and um, when it gets too cold inside. So I've got this box back here, you know, it's just got a light sensor on top to track the light. And inside's all the fun stuff, uh, you know, Pi and um, some uh, RJ45 jacks to connect to the sensors. Um, a humidity sensor, there's a temp sensor in there somewhere. And wow. some, uh, epic. Yeah, so and there's, you know, I've got a weather station in here too, but that's being upgraded right now. So, uh, but yeah, it um, it keeps me from having to uh, keep track of a lot of things because I'm busy a lot of times with my kids and soccer. So. Okay, and you're, and you're growing limes? Yes, um, they actually uh, just came off the uh, tree earlier this week. Um, I got about two and a third pounds of them and made some really good heat on top. So. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's good if you need to like make drinks and you need limes. Like there's <laughs> lime in every drink, so you need to keep on top of that. Yeah, right, these great. Smell, 
Thanks. All right. Nice sure work, Joe. Don't forget to email support at adafruit.com, and you get it as seen on the show and tell sticker. And anyone who has their project, um, make sure you post a link in the comments if you document it somewhere. Have good recipes to use with limes. Have uh, all sorts of things Guacamole, like that. Guacamole. Uh, okay. Margarita. So next up is uh, Matt France. No, Matt disappeared. Um, Galaxyman. Yeah, I think Food Frenzy has been popping in now. Let's see if um, Food oh, Frenzy food is, is, food is frenzy beaming is, in. Is a Mac. Maybe. It and then we had C. Phones. Scott, and then we also had um, oh, Rhett, Rhett, and then the Galaxy. Galaxy is not actually here, though. Yeah. Sometimes when, they, uh, when they're when they trying to get into the Hangout, and there's Matthew. Let's that, see if he beams in. We're not having beaming in issues. Do, 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 do. I should probably remind people to uh, make sure they go on Ethernet with Google Hangouts. It is, it is useful. Because Wi-Fi is always a little difficult. Uh, is any, does anyone have video? Oh, he did. Rhett, Rhett did for a second. Hey, Rhett, you there? I'm here. OK, oh, wow, oh. great. Spooky. <laughs> I know I've got the uh, Halloween lighting on today. Yeah, spooky. this is great. Uh, I didn't want to. I thought it would be a little bit distracting to have on the whole time. But uh, anyway, right. uh, let me. Project. I'm scared. Yeah. Uh, show you why we've got the lights off. Um, so this is um, an EL uh, wire project that uh, I put together for the uh, mini maker fair that uh, I exhibited at a few weeks ago at Baton Rouge. Um, and uh, it was kind of a, uh, it's a repurposing of, uh, of an old costume project that I had. So I had uh, an EL sequencer with uh, uh, Eight lengths of EL wire, and uh, so I worked together. Uh, actually, it was a family project. My mom helped me put together these uh, shadow boxes, and there's a mirror in the background. Um, and so we've got the different EL strands going into each of the uh, four different parts of the shadow boxes there, and uh, actually kept the uh, the sequencer code the same. And uh, so it kind of just uh, exploits the, uh, you know, the different pairings and, and symmetry as it just, like, loops through and, you know, blinks them on and off, so. That's okay. Cool. I like the flower one. That's kind of nice, little flower. Yeah. I'll just look at this for a second. Beep, 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 beep. beep, beep. Where's yeah, so I, you know, I might uh, I might make some upgrades to it in the future. Maybe uh, like so the the one in the upper left uh, here is supposed to be uh, straight, um, oh, but cool. uh, I'll go back with uh, probably hot glue to get those uh, to get better angles on that. And I've also got uh, a couple dozen like little smaller mirrors that I plan to uh, kind of like uh, add at various spots to see if I can create some interesting hall of mirrors effects. So. Okay. Can you turn on the lights again so folks can see the build with um, the uh, yeah there you go Here, inside those oh, there's a mirror behind ah. it yeah 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 I see okay that's cool because you can um it looks like you have twice the amount of EL <laughs> exactly <laughs> a good idea for all lighting designers <laughs> cut you your save money. cut your budget in half all right well thank you so much um. You get asked on the show and tell sticker. It won't be visible when it's uh, dark, but um, you'll, know it's, <laughs> you'll know it's there, and that's all that matters. Thanks. Okay. Well, I think the rest of the folks are having some connectivity things, so I'm going to uh, end this party while it's going good. Well, top in? Yeah. Yeah, everyone else is frozen or no video. Yeah. I'm, I must not be visible. Hmm. Hello? Yeah, who's... who's uh, Scott. Scott, you're not visible, but you have a phone call. Is that uh, you, see that? Yeah. I don't know why my camera's off. <laughs> uh, Do you want to play some music in the background? <laughs> well, I'm in my office. This is why I'm forced to be on my iPad. I don't have a uh, webcam up here. But uh, that's I okay. was going to show you my uh, printed clips that go on the uh, LED strip over there. Okay. And I'm going to... It's apparently my eyeglasses are in. Um... <laughs> um and I'll just show you this next week. I'm going to show you the first eagle board I ever did because it was 13 years ago. And I had wow. Board. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'll just show that to these guys. But uh, and my MIDI interface is a plug onto an Arduino. And who came in? I'll just show you that stuff okay. next week. Talk next to you later. Week. Very cool. All right. All right thank well, you thank everybody. you so much, C. Scott. I remember when um, uh, Lady Gaga's lawyers were talking to us about the Lady Ada trademark, and Lady Ada's been around more than. Lady Gaga and Lamore pulled out these old circuit boards that she made like 12 years ago. 2000, 2005? Yeah. I have some PCBs. Actually, I have some PCBs from 2000. 
three in Eagle Cad. I gotta find out my first mini pop when that was made. It's two thousand three, I think. Yeah. I had some of yours when I first met you in two thousand four. Yeah. So collectible. Yeah. Get the prior art out. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm like, no. It's like a photo of me within the movie. Yeah. Like, you know, lady that is older than like, Lady Gaga. It's true. Okay. Well, we're going to see everybody on Ask an Engineer in just a few minutes. Thank you, everyone. We're here every week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll real camera next week. Bye, guys. <laughs> Come back next week if you want to show your it's stuff It's okay talk, talking, talking firework icon. <laughs> You can come back anytime. Maybe it's like a and, talking Mac. Or and something. we'll uh, we'll see you on uh, Show and Tell. And tomorrow is 3D Hangouts at 3 p.m. With Matt, Noah, and Pedro. Okay. All the 3D news is fit fit to print. Thanks, guys. <laughs> see you in a bit. <laughs>